so hello everybody um yeah it's a doggy butt he doesn't quite look in the camera like tinker does not quite you're close i think it's simply because he's twice her height all right so kerbal says i got straight a's in a second semester in a row dang it i'm like why he's like you make that sound like it's such a terrible thing. That's how you get teeny tiny, like, scholarships in the U.S. Like, $500 scholarships. They're like, oh yeah, look at you, you're doing well, let's reward you with money! It's not a lot of money, but, you know, $500 is $500. So, Fluff, can I get you to sit? Higher expectation. oh! Yeah, I can see how that would be problematic. It's like my dad and my my grades versus my sister's grades. My dad's like, I know you're capable of straight A's. I'm like, but what about my sister? $500 for one textbook? Um, that might get you two textbooks, maybe three. Um, textbooks aren't cheap. And in fact, there's, not gonna lie, there's all sorts of ways to get around the expensive textbook thing. And that's, I've bought foreign textbooks. It's the same content. They're just meant for international markets. So I think my second C++ book had like Chinese on the outer cover, but the inside was all English. It was also paperback. Um, I know of people that have literally pirated textbooks. Not joking. That's a thing. Use textbooks and now you can rent textbooks which is actually kind of handy because you pay a lot less up front. And um, rather than buy it and then um, return it and hope that you get some money back with renting, you at least know you're gonna pay this flat fee and you don't keep the book when you're done, but you can, but sometimes places make you pay like the full price of the new book. So, but yeah. Prices of textbooks are insane. I also used to go for like older versions of textbooks, which usually they don't change a whole lot. They really don't. So it worked well when I had a math class that generated their own homework. So I didn't have to do, um, didn't have to do problems out of the book. Um, Guido says, rent? Isn't that what libraries used to do? Public libraries in the U.S. are free. So you can go in, you sign up for a library card, um, you take check out books for free. Uh, so that's considered lending. And sometimes the textbooks are in the library, like are in the campus library, and you can use them just at the library. You can't take them home or anything. Um, I don't know how other institutions handle this. I'm only familiar with Youngstown State. And, you know, working area, a lot of commuter students, although we're starting to get a lot of like international students, which is awesome. Um, and a lot of out of town students. They have to keep building housing. But yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Larry says, Annie time. Hi, Annie. Hi, Larry. We have Tinker on cam too. But yeah, um, Mike Cassidy says, a million years ago when I remember the GI Bill barely covered my textbooks at Columbia. Yeah, Arnstro, unless you don't return the library books on time, then you then there can be fees, which can add up to sometimes more than the cost of the book. But if you do it right, it's free. But yeah, yeah, textbooks are a racket. It's terrible. It's terrible. And there are some books where... Like, you can't rent them, um, and you can't sell them when you're done, so you're just stuck with, like, old textbooks, which kind of sucks. And all, of course, there's all this digital media stuff, too, that some universities require you to have, and... Yeah, no. <sighs> just no. Just no. I think. Tinker's like, I want to see. I could probably get a nice bookshelf from O'Reilly for $500. Probably! 
Probably. It's it's kind of that bad. I still have textbooks. I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. <sighs> sometimes you can mail them off to prison. Sometimes you can put them on book exchange websites and get them that way. But a lot of people want uh, real new. I uh, want the newer stuff. Larry says, I hear eat big music. Yes, I have uh, pretzel going. I have pretzel going. Um, another thing you can do with old textbooks is um, you can create floating bookshelves with you know, with them. Uh, you somehow attach a bracket to the bottom book and then you just stack other books on top of it. It involves attaching it to your wall permanently. Um, I have defaced really old textbooks, really old math textbooks into uh, kind of Harry Potter. Well, they were, were for Harry Potter, but for like textbooks for Harry Potter for display. So that's another good thing to do for like Halloween. I actually need to, I still have a couple at the campus I need to finish. Um, but yeah. There's <laughs> I know. Oh, we're not playing bingo. We don't do bingo during daily space. <laughs> Part of me's like, maybe. Maybe. Larry says, no burning of the books. Think of the carbon. No, I'll just deface them. I'll just deface them. So I'm not gonna lie, if I'm gonna survive, if a zombie apocalypse it, apocalypse came and I needed some uh, tinder to get a fire started, I know of a few old textbooks that I would use. Cosmic Quest X, faster than a speeding dog bark. It is literally a key on my thing that as soon as they bark, my instinct is to hit that key. Because they are loud. They're so and I know my mic picks up like everything. I can have something beep in the kitchen. People be like, what's that? I'm like it's in the kitchen. That's two whole rooms away. And you guys can hear it. Um, I'm not even gonna touch politics DPI. I'm just not gonna go there. I'm just not gonna go there. It will share the interesting observation that uh, Youngstown traditionally is a very de votes very democratically and the last presidential election we did not all right night kerbal you made the leaderboard i'm so excited hey wayne are you in the are you in the pub are you in the pub i know star strider and iron star got donuts and the the art on the wall to the donut place is really nice not today oh okay well, I mean, it isn't Sunday, so I guess that's to be expected. Tinker, you're a little off your mark. You're a tiny bit off your mark, Tink. All right, so it's one o'clock. I'm gonna kill the music. Bye, music. And of course, when you do that, I literally lose everything else. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to mute myself. I am going to run the rocket video for a second and I am going to do some lap dog, lap dog docking and then we'll get into the news. Da, 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 da. You might get locked outside. Ah, 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 ah. I know you have strong opinions on this, but you keep it up. You're, ah, you're going to go outside. Yeah, I got some dogs to take care of. All right. Da, da, da. There are opinions. All right. I'll be right back.
committed. Hello, welcome to Daily Space for today, August 7th, 2019. I am your host, Annie Wilson, and we do rocket launch stuff on Wednesdays. So let's get at it. We're going to cover the things that launched, the things that are going to launch, and, you know, some other space newsy updates. And this is a headphone warning to all of you all. There are is our our videos of actual real live rocket launches and um rocket launches are loud you've been warned you've been warned so it hasn't been a super busy week and it's not gonna be a super busy week next next week Blech. so let's get at it all right so first up as soon as i find my notes there was a launch for the russian military it actually happened on time-ish on August 5th at 21.56 UTC. That's 9 p.m. 56 minutes or 9.56 p.m. UTC. That would have been like 6-ish East Coast, West Coast, da 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 Anyway, that doesn't matter. Why? There was no live video. It's the Russian military. Did you expect there to be live video? Because I sure didn't. In fact... In fact, wait for it, it gets even better than no live video. There's no official launch media from this particular launch. I'm not joking. All the photos and all the videos released as official media for this launch were from other launches. This is not the first time Russian media has done this and I doubt it'll be the last. There was one potentially launch related image and it was from someone that saw a rocket trail near Baikonur. That's it. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Russia's gonna do what Russia's gonna do. And apparently Tinkerbell agrees. She didn't want to be faced that way. All right. So the next thing that launched, and we did actually watch this was the Arian Space launch on yesterday, in fact, at 1930 UTC. Our instro, Dave, Dave streamed this launch for us. And yeah, it was actually, you know, super cool. Everything seemed to go smoothly. They uh, launched not one, but two satellites. And here is the mission poster that Dave found. It has both of the satellites pictured as well as a rainbow. I'm not sure why the rainbow is there. And the Ariane 5, which is the rocket used to launch both of the satellites. One of the satellites is has beams down towards Africa and what looks like India, in general Middle East, because that's the areas that are going to be served. And there's also a toucan, just kind of chilling in the middle of the image. And I'm assuming that's representing um, French Guiana launch site, which is in a tropical area. Oh, it has to do with the full spectrum of radio communications. Thanks, Dave. Because I was like, all right, it's a rainbow. It's got to be a spectrum. So why? But yeah, that actually makes sense because, yeah, they do cover a whole lot of uh, radio bands, if I remember correctly. French Guiana is highlighted in blue as well. Good eye, DPI. I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that. So, 
even though it's not a space mission patch, yes, even though it's not a mission patch, there's still a whole lot of symbolism going on in this uh, poster, which is still pretty cool. Okay, and yes, we have launch media. Headphone users, you've been warned. Following on the internet. We hope you're enjoying it. We're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO as he will call out the final seconds. Watch for the cryogenic arms to open. That sets the ball rolling. Enjoy the liftoff. So I kind of kept it a little early, but uh, this is the Arian 5. The side boosters is actually considered the first stage. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage du vulcan. Allumage du ZAP et décollage. normaux, la propulsion est nominale. Et de la manœuvre en roulis. All right. So, DPI corrected me. I'm actually going to stop this here because it goes into the clouds and you won't be able to see it pretty soon. Les paramètres sont nominaux. But the launch went pretty nominal. And um DPI corrected me. No, here the boosters are boosters. It's the GSLV-3 where, that I'm thinking of where the boosters are the first stage. So yeah, it up, it went up nominal. Everything was released just fine. And Dave has a new bird in his flock as soon as that bird gets into position. So there was another launch yesterday that we streamed and that was SpaceX. It took off after a, did I get my... Oh, GSLV. Okay. Um, it took off after about a half hour delay. They had, um, they delayed for weather. So, but they also had a two hour launch window. So it's okay that they waited 30 minutes to launch because they still had, you know, an hour and a half just in case something went wrong. And they almost kind of did have something go wrong. There was something called out during launch. They're like, okay, if this isn't cleared, we're going to hold at T minus 30 seconds. It was cleared. I still don't know what it was. And it took off when they had planned for it to take off. So, oh. Oh, it wasn't delayed during the weather. I'm just now looking at Dave's notes. It was actually delayed to ensure an actual potential problem was fixed. Um, but yeah. And I, the range, yeah. So it was, all I know is that it was delayed and it's okay that it was delayed because it still took off. So this launch was at 2323 UTC, which was what, about 7.30 East Coast time. And here is the mission patch. So the SpaceX mission patch for Ammo 17, there are 17 total stars in the sky with two of them being larger than the others. A kind of a line drawing, artistic rendering of the Amos satellite itself. There's a teeny tiny four leaf clover for luck as with uh, all Falcon 9 mission patches. So why are there two stars larger than the other? Here's what I think about them. It's the number of times Amos has been a payload. So about three years ago, SpaceX was supposed to launch Amos 6, but space is hard. And the payload was lost during a static test fire explosion on the pad. It, the satellite didn't even make it to space. So because of the loss, Spacecom, who is the owner operator, I'm assuming, of the Amos satellites, had two options. They could get the insurance money through a very certiquous, a very not straightforward path. Words are hard. Um, 
because the satellite was lost before launch, it wasn't actually their insurance that would have covered it. It was the insurance of the people who built the rocket, or not built the rocket, built the satellite, excuse me, I'm sorry. So the, the company that built the rocket, the people that built the, not the rocket, the satellite, the people that built the satellite filed the insurance claim or could file an insurance claim. I can't remember the details right now, but anyways, it comes down to claim the insurance money by a very indirect route or opt for the free launch. They opt for the free launch, which at the time was actually more than what they would have gotten for the insurance money. I think 2016, one Falcon 9 launch was $62 million and the insurance money that they would have collected would have been $50 million. So yeah, at the time, a free launch was, you know, definitely more valuable. Now it's about the same. Um, so yeah, they chose the free launch, which is why uh, Amo 17 went up with them. And that's why I think there's two large stars. And yes, yes, there's launch video, headphone users, You've been warned. Nine is on startup. <laughs> Stage two, pressing for flight. LD is go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one, pressing for flight. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Ignition. Lift off. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Vehicle is supersonic. Coming up on one minute into flight, we're getting ready for maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle has reached maximum aerodynamic pressure. All right. So again, that went well. Everything separated well. There was no recovery of the first stage. It needed literally all of the fuel to make it to the orbit, make it to the orbital insertion point, I think is the correct term. It needed all of the fuel to get AMOS 17 to where it needed to be. It was a big boy. Um, oof. They did catch the fairings. There is a video of the fairings. Guess who forgot to include the video of the fairing catching? I did. But yeah, they did retrieve the fairings. Um, as far as I know, all of that went well. Um, I know the plan was to catch one in the net with Ms. Tree and the plan was to fish the other one out of the ocean. So yeah, yeah. All right, so those were all the launches that happened. So let's talk about the launches that... <laughs> Okay. <sighs> 
Puck apparently has strong feelings on this launch, and I might be able to shed some insight into why. So this launch, the ULA, United Launch Alliance launch, is tomorrow morning. 9.44 a.m. UTC. So if you're in plus UTC land, this is probably going to be a great uh, launch for you to watch live. For those of us that live in minus four UTC, that's 5.44 Eastern time. I am not a morning person. Dr. Pamela is not a morning person. And my, essentially for me to cover this, I'd have to stay up all night and that's just not an option because, you know, no. I love you all, but I am not streaming this launch at all. It, I am full of nope, it is not happening. It is literally way too early for me. So the cool thing about this launch is that um, ULA and SpaceX share a range in Florida. And this is actually going to be the fastest turnaround between two orbital rocket launches since May of 1981. Yeah, that's longer than I've been alive. So that's pretty freaking cool. That is actually pretty freaking cool. So I don't have a lot of information about this launch. We've talked about it a gazillion times before because it's you know kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Um, it is the AEHF and it's going to go up on Atlas V. AEHF is um, secure military uh, communication satellite that's going to work with the older uh, military communications satellite constellation called Milstar. Yeah. So, yeah. We've talked about this. The videos are up on YouTube. It's happening. They've set a date. It's gonna happen. We're not streaming it. All right, so that's actually all of the launches. This is the only launch that's going to occur between now and the 14th. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? So I said there was an announcement. Oops, I clicked too far. I said there was an announcement. There was totally an announcement yesterday. Yesterday was a very busy streaming day for us here at CosmoQuest. And um, Rocket Lab had a kind of hey, tune in mystery stream that they were really buzzing. Like, hey, come watch this, come watch this. So what was all their hype about? So Rocket, La or Rocket Lab is, they have rockets that are small enough that you could hug an unfueled one, emphasis on an unfueled uh, rocket. They're not very big around, they don't carry very heavy payloads, but they can, launch frequently from New Zealand. They also use 3D printing and there's some different bits going on with how their engines work that I don't fully understand because I am not a rocket scientist. Um, but they are going to start reusing their first stages. That's cool which apparently they never planned on doing. Mind you, Rocket Lab has had less than 10 launches total. And they're like, yeah, we're gonna do this. We don't know when we're going to do this, but we're going to do this. So what's up with these two pictures on the screen? So Dave put this together for me. And on the left is the picture, or is it a still from the video that they showed? It was animation of how they're going to recover the first stage. Essentially, rather than adding more weight and more fuel and actively guiding the first stage down, they're just gonna kind of put a parachute on it and they're going to have a helicopter, no joke, snag the parachute. Okay, so where did that idea come from? On the right is a picture of something, again, hanging from a parachute coming down from way up high. So the aerial recovery method that Rocket Lab is going to use for their first stages is similar to the method used by the United States Air Force to catch spy satellite film canisters 
returning from space during the Cold World. World? No, Cold War. Because remember, not all photos and not all data was digital. We actually had film that had to come back down to Earth to be developed and then analyzed, not just beamed back down to Earth. So, yeah. Hanny's asking, how big is this helicopter? I really don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But I do have part of the video where they talk about this, so we're going to watch that. And go. Oh no, oh no, and I didn't tell it where in the video to start. In a, in a sea. As we skip and skip and skip and skip and skip, I think it was like halfway through. Photo eat. There's, so there's comments about eating right. his hat and. I think this is it. So Electron is going reusable. So Larry Hass, is the parachute steerable? I have no idea. I don't know if the parachute is steerable. Um, but yeah, it's... It's pretty cool. They are going reusable. Um, Ed Thompson says, It's like Skyhook, just using the onboard cargo hook to catch the parachute, basically. Yeah, they are literally just trying to catch the parachute. How am I still muted? I am not still muted, am I, guys? I shouldn't be. Do 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 do. Okay, I am not muted. Alright, Susie's just delayed. Woo! Um, the cable under the aircraft is quite long, so there's not a lot of risk, and yeah. Uh, but where are they going to land that thing? They are probably going to put it down on that same boat that carried the helicopter out. And yeah, I mean, it's really not a very big first stage. Okay, time to undock the lap dog. Oof! Okay. Undock the lap dog, throw some Cheerios at the dogs. <sighs> um, try to pull up the thing. There we go. So now we can see. Yeah, still not Elon's boat. Yeah. Oh shit, boat is a lot smaller. Technicalities. Oh, DPI. Oh, DPI. To me, it, they're all boats. They're all boats. I, I think I explained the difference between a ship and a boat to my nephew once, and you'd think I'd remember that. Oh, thank you for the bits, Kerbal! I mean, yeah, we're not calling it a target. And make it rain! She's too busy to bark. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the bits. Um, so I think I answer, I think I did a decent, um, yeah, no, I am not a Navy vet. Otherwise, I'd be like, 
definitely know the difference. Um, Tracker Kev says, send the ULA to a note to delay the launch for two or 12 hours. I don't think that'll work. And even if it does delay the launch by 12 hours, um, Dave's going to be in Youngstown tomorrow, I think. I think that's the plan. So I think I caught all of the questions. You guys didn't really have a whole lot of questions for me today. You really didn't. So, um, so I guess let's talk about, while you type in your questions, let's talk about next week. Next week I am on vacation. I leave Monday and I return on Friday. I will not be streaming while I'm gone because reasons it's a vacation <laughs> um there's not a whole lot of launch stuff happening so i will probably throw some info together for the usual wednesday let's talk about rocket stuff stream um and because it's not there really aren't a whole lot of launches to talk about like if ula goes up there's that one to talk about that did go up and really there's nothing really going up until like the 16th so yeah it's an easy it's an easy week so what i do have is some other kind of updates that i can toss together for uh, star strider with hopefully enough notes that they all make sense so yeah yeah, literally two launches the one to talk about and the one that's coming up that's that's it that, that should be an easy week maybe a surprise uh star uh star hopper i actually don't don't do it dogs i know you want to don't do it um i actually don't follow star hopper as closely as you do larry i think you are indeed the resident uh star hopper expert right now so um Falco says, all the rocket companies take a break so you can take a week off. How nice of them. I know, right? I know, right? So that should be fun. So yeah, um, next week I won't be here streaming at all. I'll be here the week after. And then the week after that, so the last week of August. Um, oh, thank you for the bits, Ed. Tinker stole a soul. Okay. I don't even get to say the thing. Tinker says thank you. I say thank you. <laughs> um, so the week, yeah, the last week of August, both uh, Dr. Pamela and I and Susie too are actually all going to be in Tucson. And I imagine we will be streaming from there. So yeah, yeah. No, Tinker does not mess around, especially not with food. She conned me out of second dinner the other night. So, but yeah, we're all going to be in the same place. We are going to get a group photo. I don't know if I can get that Bennu Stout anymore. For Space Fest, no, this is actually um, the PSI annual retreat where I'm going to meet a whole bunch of people that I've only ever emailed with. So, yeah. Hilarious. I'll be back in O'Fallon next week. Um... Second breakfast is Tinker a hobbit dog. Tinker is a um, Tinker's a dash hound, and apparently dash hounds are just hobbit dogs. She is very food motivated. So, yeah, yeah. I had to give um, the lovely admin person three bullet points about my my science, and Dr. Pamela helped me with this one, and it uh, it turned out to be citizen science engagement. I don't remember what the second one was. Oh, data visualization. You know, the, the Hubble, usually the Hubble images I do. And space toilets. And the reply I got was essentially, oh, you might have to do a breakout session on space toilets. <laughs> so I may actually have to uh, brush up on all of my space toilet numbers before the retreat. But yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. Um... So that's what's happening for travel for me for the rest of this month. Uh, I don't do the toilet check. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's like, okay, the number of toilets has changed. Has, have humans come, come, uh, come down from the ISS? Did I miss that? I, I don't follow, uh, undocking and unbirthing of 
still use capsules as much as I do following them up. So I actually am not entirely too sure how many humans and how many toilets are in space because it's all dependent on how many humans are in space right now. Yeah, she's totally hypnotizing you for bits. Um, when will the USA build their first functioning zero-G laboratory? Um, we have built the um, space shuttle toilets. Those were of American design. We've built the toilet on Skylab, which is uh, was America's um, space station. So that was of American design. And there were others. I'm not sure. Um, Falco asks, each human has his own to toilet on ISS. No, um, there are two toilets on the ISS. One is for the Americans and one is for Russia. And there's also one in each Soyuz. So the, why I'm saying it depends, how many toilets depends on how many humans is because the humans are going to come down in one of the Soyuz. And when that happens, they undock um, the Soyuz, undock, unbirth, I think it's undock because it was done without the Canada arm. The Soyuz can dock automatically. So when the Soyuz undocks from ISS, it'll get far enough away from the ISS, and then as it goes back into the atmosphere, Soyuz is actually in three parts, and uh, only one part comes back down to the Earth, and another, the central part, which is this like big sphere thing, that's actually where the toilet is, and that gets burned up in the atmosphere. So um, yes, the Crew Dragon will probably have a toilet because humans, because humans. But um, I don't know anything about the toilet. I imagine all of that's going to be pretty, you know, kept pretty classified. I don't see them improving too much on space toilet technology. I'm not really sure how much can be improved, but this is me just looking at it as a um, as a layman, so to speak, because all I know is right now they use suction, and as long as suction isn't immediately out to space itself, it should be good. Right, the demo mission for the Crew Dragon didn't have one because dummies don't need one. Um, how many will Starship have? One in each cabin? I don't know. I don't know. And, um... I think with the abort test for, who did the latest abort test? I don't think it was SpaceX. I know for the latest abort test that uh, they just used um, a mass simulator. So there was no anything inside of it. It was just the same shape of the capsule with the same amount of mass it would be. So. Um, make my cabin in sweet. Well, you know, I'm sure that's extra. I'm sure that's extra. I'm sure that's extra. So, yeah, that's that's all I know about space toilets. I am gonna have to brush up on all on my knowledge and info and things of that nature, because. <clears throat> right now, I, I remember and know enough to torture my family. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's highly amusing to tell a 12 year old boy about space toilets. So no number two on number three? I don't know. You need to have that on your business cards. Ambia says, hi, I'm super late. Hi, we're talking about space toilets because it's me. Um, I, I actually do want to have a button made that says, ask me about space toilets. I don't think I'll have it made in time for, uh, in time for Tucson. But I think I might actually be able to go to my local library and use, I think they have a button creator machine. So I would love to have a button that says, ask me about space toilets. So yeah, that's what's going on with travel. Now let's talk about Bennu because as much as none of us like mapping Bennu, it still needs to be done. So right now, 
I don't have the database up, but right now, as far as we are for Bennu, um, Falco says, you know who liked toilets? The Dutch. Somehow, every time I was in a restaurant with some Dutch people, sooner or later, the uh, conversation veered to toilets. It sounds like I need to hang out with some Dutch people. Um, so yeah, let's look at how many numbers are left. We have, wow, there are 986 remaining images. I will do my spreadsheet update probably after I finish streaming and get a glass of water. And I will post that in Discord so you can see how many images are, are so what, uh, it's stuck, I guess? Stuck in what places? How much time do we have left? All right. Um, yeah, uh, as far as how much time do we have left, our, our time limit is now ASAP. As soon as we get done, the better. Now, now, DPI came up with a date. And if we finish by that date, last night I originally said I would eat bugs. The thought of me eating bugs makes Dr. Pamela literally squirm in her seat. So I revised that to the essentially every flavor jelly beans. And there's the, um, there's two different ways to do the every flavor. There's literally to get jelly bellies, Burt's or uh, Birdie Bot's every flavor. And there's a much more evil one where two jelly beans look the same, but they have very different flavors. Like, popcorn and vomit. So yeah. Um, so rather than make Dr. Pamela squirm about the thought of me eating bugs, that seems much more palatable for everybody. So um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Tame says the deeply visceral reaction was obvious to those sitting on the same couch. No bugs, please. Right. Um, so yeah, like real, real bugs. I, I actually have a tiny thing of chap chapulines on my desk right now, but um, I'm not going to do that to Dr. Pamela. So yeah. Um, oh yeah, like uh, DPI says some of them can look like the ones for chocolate chips and dog food look exactly like and this works out well because um, I'm go because I'm going to be in Vegas next week, and they do have a Jelly Belly thing there. I should be able to pick up like the latest version of whatever it is. So, yeah, I had some crawdads the other day. Actually, they were they were weird. They were weird. And lobster, I don't know. I mean, it could count as a bug. Lobster used to be considered trash food, so, you know. You know, it is seafood, though. So, yeah, that's what's going on with Bennu. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm afraid to tell you guys the date, but I, know, I also feel like... Um, part of me is like, if I tell you the date, you might actually do it. I don't know. I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to talk, do not do it. Do not mention the date. Okay. All right. I'm not mentioning the date, but if we finish by that date, I will eat the gross jelly beans. <laughs> Talking about eating gator tail. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> okay then. Oh, yeah, even DPI says don't do it. Also, I've revised my spreadsheets, just waiting for your numbers. All right, all right. So yeah, everybody is in agreement that I don't tell you the date, just that, you know, there are rewards. We're not going to make you do that. No, I want you to do that. Of course, like Noel last night was like, everybody stop mapping now and make it rain. Everybody's like, stop mapping now. And... Jeez, Tinker. So, no, this is... This is... 
Is there an even earlier date to make you not eat the bug? Mm, let me talk to DPI. No bugs, just popcorn. See, I feel like some of you are split. Like you really, um, let me talk to DPI. I feel like some of you are split. I feel like some of you are like, yeah, eat the gross jelly beans. And some of you are like, yeah, no. So Yeah, let me talk to DPI. Let me revise my numbers and talk to DPI, and we'll we'll see about that. Because even Star Strider is saying uh, that should be a thing. No, I refuse to eat bugs while they're alive and crawly. No, I can't do that to myself. No, nope, 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 no crawlies. Oh wow. Wow, that's actually bold. Um, and make it rain. Ooh, coconut shrimp sounds good. So Star Strider says, I'm tempted to say, if you finish by the end of next week, I'll get a tattoo of Bennu, a small tattoo, but a tattoo of Bennu. So guys, maybe. I will live stream it if I can. That's That's bold. That's a bold move. It's a dead if it's a definite if you fin all right, so if you guys finish by Sunday by Sunday, um Dr. Pamela will get a small tattoo of Bennu somewhere on her body in a, I'm assuming in a location where it's safe to live stream her getting it. So yeah. Left forearm. Okay. Ah. Ah. No, no more barking. If she wants to get a tattoo, she's allowed to get a tattoo puck. Ah, ah, ah. My dogs have strong opinions on this and or things that are happening outside. All right, I'm running out of Cheerios. We've talked about Bennu. We've talked about travel plans. We've talked about things going up into space. And we've talked about, you know, things that went up into space. So Mike Cassidy says, I think we'll make it by Sunday. I'm waiting to see when Mike runs out of images. Not going to lie. All right. And as a reminder, we have a leaderboard now for Bennu. And... Once you hit 50 images, you will be on that leaderboard. And I am I am totally okay. So Falco says, well, I promise I'll map as fast as possible without you doing anything you don't really want to do. I am, I, I feel like I need to make this abundantly clear. I am totally okay with the gross jelly beans. I am totally okay with eating bugs. Um, there was a local hot dog place here that regularly served crickets on its hot dogs and tater tots, and that was one of my favorite things to get. I am totally okay with that. Um, so to be abundantly clear, I am okay with the things that I'm offering. So Michael says, I won't get anywhere near 50 images. You want to know what, Michael? That's fine. You, you're still doing a science. You're still doing a science. Um, DPI says, I shall stream a bit of hate mapping later. No ent entertainment, but certainly company and mapping. Sounds good to me. Um, so yeah, the leaderboard. If you make it to the leaderboard, you need to do 50 images or more. If you make it to the leaderboard, you are probably going to get a small piece of mission swag not cosmo quest swag mission swag by by small piece of swag i mean pins uh stickers patches uh if you really want a t-shirt i'm gonna say probably more than a thousand images why more than a thousand images for a t-shirt <laughs> can i make it rub out the rocks that would be awesome 
Why more than a thousand for t-shirts? So t-shirts are kind of expensive to ship and we are shipping internationally. <laughs> da, da, da. Don't start. Um, also, they may not have a whole lot of t-shirts left and the t-shirts may actually have to be made. And I'd much rather tell you all a much higher number for the t-shirts than, and you know, pleasantly surprise a bunch of y'all, then set a real lower number and make y'all angry. So, can I ship t-shirts to Bennu? No. If you're on Bennu right now talking to us, I, I, A, won't believe you, and B, want to know how you're surviving on this gravel pit of an asteroid. So, yeah. Yeah, I Star Starter says, um, I wish we could erase the rocks. Yes. Oh, Benu. Oh, Benu. Do you ship t-shirts to Benu without a t-shirt? Ay, ay, ay. So I know that um, some people are racing each other. I know DPI is racing Zatharis. I got it wrong yesterday. Zatharis. But I don't think Zathyrus knows that they're being raced. So, yeah. Yeah, Guido's like, what did I come back to? And Guido came back to, you know, Star Strider getting a, uh, getting a, um, a tattoo. And that, that was the cat. So, overlook him. Or overtook him, new target. Yeah. You're still only, well, you're about 30. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do math. You're 21 images ahead of him. So he could still, uh, catch up. I haven't seen Babylon 5, so I don't understand the reference. All right. So the cat was screaming. That means it's the official time to cut Tinker's, you know, not being successful with stealing any more souls. Can you sit, please? She's like, no. No. Yeah, the cat's in the background. Um, he screamed only once, but I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. I don't trust him. <sighs> yeah. Falco says, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. I am from Bennu. That's fine. <sighs> okay. So with that, I am going to get ready to roll the credits and do... <laughs> the wall of text. <laughs> Cause here comes the cats. Here comes the cats. All right. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, are you gonna come closer? Or are you just gonna stand there? Um, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for doing a science. So, wall of text time. This has been a production of PSI, that's Planetary Science Institute, working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown. It looks like it's sunny outside. Ohio. Um, we are brought to you by you. So thank you for doing a science! Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for your pledges, your bits, your subscriptions, your, um merch purchases. Thank you for all of that. And if you can't afford to do any of that, that's okay. Polos are free. <laughs> Polos are free. Yes, kitty. Come here. Come here. Polos are free. And uh, yeah, it's free to hang out with us during a stream. It's free to hang out with us in Discord. It's free to, sub uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channels where literally everything is archived. Literally everything is archived. And and if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, why don't you join us for a live stream? We stream Sundays through Fridays at 1700 hours UTC or 1 p.m. Eastern. And yeah, if it's me, there's bound to be both a cat and dogs and he just doesn't like being held. And <laughs> I think that's all. So yeah, have a wonderful insert time of day here. Keep being awesome. And yeah, I will see you soonish. Bye. Cat, why?